punching youngster. Part of that is still true. He's still a big puncher. I'm not so sure. Uh, well, like everybody else, he's, he's got that bit older. Enzo Macaronelli, good morning. Great to see you. Great to see you, Jim. Morning, nice. Enzo. Nice. nice to meet you guys. Morning. You know Murphy, you know Saunders, and you certainly know this part of the world, the Principality Stadium. You've got happy memories uh, in, in this place, have you not? Yeah, um, uh, I bought boxer three times, I think. I actually won my world title uh, here in the Principality back in 2006, a long time ago. So, yeah, some great memories for me. W what memories in particular stand out? Because the Welsh are so proud of uh, the sports stars that they produce. And I know you you were so keen, Enzo, to go to the very top in the fight game. What, what was the good and what was the bad? Uh, in, in general or here? Here. Oh, here, it was all good here. It was, it was all good. I had uh, three fights, three wins, three knockouts. Um, but the highlight, the highlight of my career would be winning a world title here, 2006. But not so much that. Seeing my dad's face smiling that his little boy has won a world title. Mm -hmm. yeah. And everyone, t everyone said he wouldn't. And my dad always said, yeah, he would. Brilliant. How did you find it, uh, trying to get the to the very top of that sport? Because these days, we see what's going on. Um, Tyson wants to stay at the top. Usyk's chasing him down. Um, we see AJ trying to be the AJ we always knew and thought he was. The competition to be the best is intense. And that's no different to when you fought. Yeah, it's, it, you've all got to improve. You've got to improve. You've got to look at the landscape around you. You've got to try and be better than them. You've got to train harder than them. It's, it's a boxing, like most top sports, it's a cutthroat world. But with boxing, you're, it's one, you're on your own. You haven't got players to fall behind. You haven't got players to blame. You're in that ring. No one cares about the excuses after the fight. If you lose, you're in there on your own, mano a mano. Uh, and it, it's a it's a tough old spot. Dino, you couldn't have boxed then, could you? Because you've already been making excuses that I your darts that. haven't turned up. I swerved the boxing one. You said your darts haven't turned up. Yeah. Excuses, like, excuses, I can't excuses. fight tonight. I don't have my gloves. He couldn't have been a boxer. Non-contact sports I'm yeah. looking at now. I know, I can but see Them that. days are gone. You mentioned, you, you mentioned your dad, Enzo. Uh, uh, your, your, your dad, uh, Mario, right? Yeah. And I think father and son dynamic in the world of boxing. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It certainly worked for Calzaghe, right? Mm. But for you, where did it go? Uh, as an amateur, yeah, it worked. And probably my dad was probably my best trainer. But I didn't listen to him. We clashed. It was always like he was trying to pick at me. It was always, he, he wanted the best out of me. I remember I remember 13 years of age, he wouldn't give me pocket money unless I turned up at the gym. And, you know, I, I hate them for that fact. But then <laughs> looking back, looking back, it all developed the way who I was. It developed me as a man. If... Me and my dad didn't clash. I'd have probably stayed with him as a pro trainer. But I obviously went over with Enzo Calzaghe, with Joe Calzaghe, and at the time, Iron Sharpened Iron. Do you know, I was, it was interesting. I was, I, funnily enough, I was listening to Joe Calzaghe talk. I don't know where, how long ago it was, but I saw an interview he did yesterday. And I didn't realise when he was in the amateurs, he lost a few times, especially when he was mm. younger. And he said it was only when his dad became his main trainer they went, he, he, then he went on to be an undefeated mm. with his dad. Which is incredible because you'd think it might go the other way, which is what you're mm. saying with your old man to a degree. And well, I think Mayweather was taught by his, uh, trained by his guy, dad for a little while as well, wasn't he? Yeah, are, you, are you your boys fight now as well, don't they? Yeah, my my, my two boys. Uh, one's just started. One's been out of a year. Um, both very good, very decent. You know, it was a long way to go to, to the, for me to say they're going to do this, they're going to do that. But they're enjoying it. They're part of a good squad, and if they want to fight, they can fight. What? So what do you say to them? To like, obviously you know what it takes to get to the top. How how harsh can you are you are you with them about? I I'm pr I'm pretty harsh, and I think you've got to be. I think is that the world we live in at the moment, and I think to go at the fuck. But I think uh, you look at the Ten Hag, the way he's shouting at Sancho, the way he's uh, going at Rashford. Today, kids can't can't deal with rejection, can't deal with criticism. But in my gym, they do. Mm. And it creates it, resilience. It, it, it certainly does. And you come to my gym and they tell them straight. But then you see my, my gym with the gangs is, is so packed. They absolutely love it. I treat them like little adults rather than young yeah. kids. Mm. So with, with my boys, if they're not doing well, I'll tell them my boy had his first fight. He won his first fight. I put, I put on my social media how proud I was of him. And I said, but I didn't think he was very good. I said he could be a lot better. And straight away you have people on there who can't say he was bad. Who can't? Yeah, of course I can't. 
If do I tell you, him, you, if I tell him good all the time, he's not going to improve. Exactly. And do you believe? Because I think that even in football, in our sport, and I, I coach some kids myself and stuff. And actually, I, I can, I think that the more, not more ruthless, but you can be critical and you can have a go at them because the ones who are going to make it will take it the right way. Look, in 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 life, there's a winner and loser and everything. Go for a job, you win. Twenty of you go for a job, the best man wins. You know. It is life. And you've you got don't, you don't want to be a pushy parent, though, Enzo. I'm not a pushy parent at all. If they train and all they're doing it properly, it's too dangerous a sport to mess about then. What about the food? Do you like to say, hey, stop eating they, them chips? They, or? They, they're young. <laughs> they, they, again, I, again, at the Well, moment, that was your they, problem, wasn't it, early on? How old are they? What, junk you, junk you food. Eat too many chips. <laughs> you, you, you did. You did you no, did. I think what it, what it was with me, because I was so light for the weight, I never had to cut weight. I could basically eat what I wanted. Um... It was the weight limit in boxing. It was light heavyweight was twelve stone seven, which is what I ended up at towards the end. But then the next weight limit was fourteen stone four. So it's a ma- it's a massive jump. Most weight divisions got like four pounds between mm. them. That that's got like nearly a stone and a half. Is it still? It's not. That so hard, it was. It? Yeah, it's still. It was twelve stone seven. It was thirteen stone eight, which suited me down to the ground. But then it jumped up to fourteen stone four. So with weight cutting and things like that, would dry out the weight, you weigh in. So on fight night, I was weighing about 13.10. At weigh-in, I was weighing about 13.10. On fight night, I was weighing about 13.10. I was fighting boys who were weighing in 14.4 at the weigh-in and about 15.2 on fight night. So it's it's a it's a big jump. So that's why I was getting away with eating yeah. the junk, like you <laughs> say, Jim. Well, yeah, I wasn't getting at you, Mr. McInerney, <laughs> not really. Uh, we'll talk about Josh Boatsy taking on Aziz this weekend, uh, Enzo. Uh, that's live on Talk Sport. We'll also talk about where we think your sport is at the moment, because uh, for most of the time, the attention's focused on Saudi Arabia. Mm. We'll get to that shortly. Do you ever look back on certain moments in your career? I, when you were lined up to fight David Hay, I thought McInerney will win that. And on the night, there were reasons why you didn't. Am I right? Ah, Ruck, it's, it's a long story. And I, if I could come on you, and I, it looked like I'm full of excuses. Fact of the matter is, on the fight night, no one made me fight. I went through with it. Would I have beat him on a different night? I don't know. He was that good. Would I have had a much better chance? Certainly. So yep. I just, I just leave it at that one, Jim. We'll leave it at that one, Enzo. We shall leave it at that one. There is a lot. There's a lot to get through with Enzo. Um, he's with us until half past eleven. As I said, uh, this Saturday, the WBA World Title Final Eliminator between two guys who are the best of pals, but they won't be when they get inside the ring uh, this Saturday night. The numbers one and two go head to head. Joshua Boatze takes on Dan Aziz uh, at the Oval Arena in Wembley, and it's live on Talksport. Get Enzo's view on that. Plus, who will win? Next month, when Usyk gets his chance, is, is Fury going to be too big? McInerney's a big guy, uh, but Fury certainly is huge. What chances Usyk have?